In this video, we're going to look at uh, how to use Caboose Industries manual switch throws on Atlas turnouts on a layout. There are two types of turnouts on my layout. This is a Pico snap switch. And so when you flip the switch, it has a little spring in it that forces it completely to one side or the other. This one is an Atlas and it doesn't have such a spring and the vibration of the train going by can sometimes cause the points to move and that will cause derailments. One of the ways you could fix that is to use a switch machine, but those are expensive and a little bit difficult to install and I have a lot of turnouts. I didn't really want to go through the cost of all that. So I'm going to Caboose Industries manual switch throws. This pack of five costs about $15 and they're pretty cheaply made and cheap plastic. They have several different varieties. Uh, this particular variety is the one that I've been using. And the problem is that the peg that comes on the switch throw does not fit in the hole of the Atlas turnout. So I know that some of their other products, uh, they might have a peg that fits in the hole, but this one doesn't, uh, but that's okay because I'm going to replace the peg anyway. So I'm going to use brass wire and I have some brass wire here that fits in the hole. And one of the reasons I'm using this is because it's stronger than the peg. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut off the little peg on all of the switch throws. With the pegs removed, I'm now going to use a pin vise and I'm going to drill a hole where the peg used to be. I've cut the brass wire into lengths about a half inch long and I'm using five minute epoxy to glue the wire into the hole. There's a lot of lateral stress on the switch throws as you throw the switches and I want it to last a long time. So this adds a bit of strength that makes it more reliable. I will cut the brass wires to the correct length later. I want to increase the mounting area on the surface of the switch throw for where I'm going to mount it onto the layout. And for that, I'm using these tongue depressors. I don't really care about how precise I cut them. That's why I'm using these wire cutters and I cut them into about an inch length. You can get tongue depressors on amazon.com in bulk and they're pretty convenient because they have a lot of different uses. You could use basswood, but I think that these are actually a stronger wood than basswood. So that's why I like to use them. I'm using a coarse emery board to rough up the bottom of the switch throw where I'm going to glue it onto the wood. And I do this to make the glue stick a little bit better. The plastic that they use here is this really kind of shiny, oily plastic, and I don't think glue sticks to it very well. So that's why I want to do this. It also occurs to me that I could wash it in dish detergent and try and get some of the manufacturing oil off and maybe that would help. But I think that this is a good idea, whether you're going to use the wood or not. Now I'm using five minute epoxy to glue the switch throw onto the wood panel. You want to make sure that you position it correctly so that the switch throw is right at the edge of the wood panel. Again, there's going to be a lot of lateral stress, so you want a really nice gluing surface and a strong adhesive uh, between the switch throw and the wood panel and then between the wood panel and your layout. The mounting plate has two holes in it where you can put nails or some kind of fastener down through the mounting plate and into your layout. And I want to drill out those holes through the wood so that I can put a nail down through there. If I don't drill out the holes, there's a bigger chance of splitting the wood when you put the nail through. Actually, it's not just a bigger chance. It's about a 100% chance. Even drilling out the hole, I split the wood on one of the five when I mounted it onto the layout but I wasn't using a drill bit that was big enough. This was the only one I had, so that was part of the problem. Now I'm just using some rail nippers to cut off the brass wire at the top so it doesn't stick up too high. If it does stick up too high, it will interfere with cars as they go by if the, you have another track adjacent that is too close. Uh, for the part that hangs down, I'm just leaving it long for now and I will trim it when I go to the layout. The switch throws as they come out of the bag are a shiny black plastic and it doesn't look very good. So one of the first things I want to do is paint them. And here I'm just using a Vallejo track primer, which is uh, just a really kind of a weird color for metal. 
uh, and I'll rust them up. You can paint them however you want, black or rust or whatever. Of course, I'm also going to paint the wood base plate and then I'm going to add some washes and just give it a good weathering and some rusting. Now we go to the layout and one thing you'll note is I used cork roadbed underneath this track and when I laid down the cork I laid down a little piece of cork where the switch throw is going to go uh, at the end of the points there. And so it's elevated up to the same level as the track. And so now what I'm going to do is mount the switch throw onto that little piece of cork that's at the same level. So I like to hold it in place and I center everything. I center the points and I put the switch throw in the center and I mount it onto the layout. I just hold it there. And then I make sure that as I throw the switch each way, it goes out to the maximum position. And you want to make sure that the little pin that sticks down is clearing all of your uh, groundwork and everything underneath it. So here I got to trim it down to the correct length, but you don't want to trim it too short because then it won't work. So now I'm ready to mount the switch throw onto the layout and I'm using five minute epoxy for this. And again, you want to check your positioning. I like to mount it with everything centered and then make sure that it's going to go to the maximum displacement on each uh, throw of the switch, each direction. Once you've done that, don't mess with it. Just let the epoxy dry. Now that the epoxy is cured, I want to check and make sure that it goes to the maximum displacement with each direction of the switch throw and make sure that the cars are able to go by uh, with no derailments. You can ignore the blue electrical tape. That's just because I was doing some wiring and that tells me which power district that track is on. So now I'm going to hammer these wire brads in through the mounting holes in the base plate of the switch throw. This is why I drilled the holes. My track is mounted on plywood and it's a little bit difficult to get the brads into the plywood. The plywood is pretty resistant to them. Uh, so to prevent hammering on your fingers or on the switch throw, I use this nail set to drive the brads in once I get the brads in place. I found that it's actually kind of difficult to drive the brad all the way into the plywood. So I'm just using some rail nippers to nip off the part that sticks up and I will just uh, cover that with a little drop of paint. This is where you have the biggest chance of splitting the wood and having to start all over again. So sometimes I just put in one brad. That's enough to hold it uh, between that and the epoxy. That is enough strength that it can handle the lateral stresses here. If you're doing this in foam, you can just push uh, some foam pins down through the holes uh, and into the foam and uh, put some epoxy or some kind of glue on the foam pins and that will hold them in place and then you can cut off the heads. Here's another one. When I was laying the track, I forgot to put down the little pad of cork for the switch throw uh, next to the turnout. So I cut away some of the scenery that I had put in there and I cleaned it up and put in a little piece of cork and that's why that cork looks fresh. Other than that, it's just the same procedure. I glue down the switch throw with epoxy and then I drive a brad in through one of the holes. So with that switch throw mounted, now I'm coming back and I'm going to clean up the scenery around the pad and I'm filling in some of the gaps with this uh, AK Interactive Muddy Ground Texture. Finally, I added some ballast in around the switch throw and made sure it still works. And this is how the final product looks.